I kind of lean forward. Say hey to the camera. Hey to the He's camera. Hold <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> oh, your horses. <gasps> Remember the hoverboard? Hoverboard. Well, no, not that hoverboard. I mean, I guess they were called hoverboards, but they're actually self-balancing scooters. Well, whatever, we're gonna call them hoverboards. You know, they were pretty cool. I mean, they had mass appeal. Everybody wanted them. Celebrities like Justin Bieber, Chris Brown, Mike Tyson were endorsing them. If you didn't own one, chances were that you knew someone who did. Then this happened. Timothy Cade says his hover booster board burst into flame. Videos of hoverboards catching fire all over social media. One is questioning the makers of hoverboards about their safety standards. His mother says the flames consume their home. Then they kind of just disappeared. So what really happened to hoverboards? The hoverboard technology actually originated from the Segway, which was unveiled back in 2001. At that time, the Segway personal transporter was said to be the next big transportation device of the future. Well, that didn't happen. Unfortunately, most people didn't see much use for them in their daily lives. I mean, I do wonder if we saw them when we had more bike lanes in cities and stuff like that, but I don't know. They didn't really seem to get much traction on the personal use side, but there were some professional uses like police officers or even a mole cop. But the technology was revolutionary nonetheless. Segway was eventually acquired by another company called Ninebot, and they've since stopped production of their original personal transporter machine. Fast forward to January 2015 at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. Hoverboard companies such as IO Hawk repackaged this technology into a smaller, lighter weight, more portable device, and it got pretty popular. Viral videos of celebrities, adults, and kids were seemingly everywhere. And unlike the Segway, they seemed to be perceived as pretty cool, and they also cost a lot less. Everybody seemed to want a hoverboard, and it seemed everyone was selling them. They began being copied and produced in varying degrees of quality, but mostly pretty bad. The market grew quickly and there was little safety standards in place. I'm sure most were familiar with the stories and the news at that time of fires from the low quality lithium batteries inside these devices. As the children run for their lives, the hoverboard explodes. It seems that this happened for a variety of reasons. Low quality parts and construction, and in seemingly most cases, poor safety measures in place. Some of these products came with a warning to not charge them past a certain time, otherwise the product will explode. This seems to set little room for error and an unreasonable expectation from the user to protect themselves. Hoverboards started being banned from places like public transportation, airlines, dozens of universities, etc. In February 2016, the US government officially declared hoverboards to be unsafe. The Consumer's Product Safety Commission cracked down hard and banned any hoverboards not meeting the UL standard, which was all of them. Selling products not in compliance came with heavy fines and boards were pulled up the market basically overnight. For those not familiar with UL, it stands for Underwriters Laboratory, and it was basically invented in the early 1900s at the request of insurance companies to test electrical lighting systems being put in buildings. At that time, there was loads of fires happening as a result of poor quality in wiring, etc. And basically the insurance company said that we're not gonna insure anything if it's not UL. And since then, it seems to have become the gold standard for helping to certify products as safe. Months later, some brands began releasing UL-certified hoverboards that passed the test for things such as overcharging, drop tests, locked rotors, etc. But it seems that with this pause in the initial hype and the fear of fires, the hoverboard has lost its traction and seems to have never regained its position in the market. I wonder how many people still have these, as I definitely don't see them in public as we once did. And although the micro-mobility trend is far from over, the threat of unsafe batteries isn't. Is the electric bike industry destined to see that same fate? Sadly, we've already seen similar stories popping up the news about the devastating fires caused by e-bike batteries that were likely not tested to any standard. E-bike batteries caused the fire. CBS2's Leah Mishkin has the latest. 
Residents of Jacob Reese houses are still shaken up after witnessing this scene unfold. In New York City, there were over 100 just last year with numerous injuries and deaths. Most are surprised to learn that there are practically no requirements for testing batteries in the U.S. And testing is difficult and costly, so it often doesn't happen. I suspect that eventually UL will become a requirement on the federal level, just as what happened with the hoverboards. It was just added to the 2022 New York City Fire Code, and it seems that many groups are speaking about this at the highest level in the bike industry and the government. This is an emerging technology, so the codes are working together with both the manufacturers and the safety folks and the fire service to try to make sure that we have standards. Will this result in the industry losing its steam? Currently, about 90% of the e-bikes on the market are not tested to the current standard of UL 2849. Maybe they will be in the near future, as I suspect we can't go on like this much longer. I've read through the lengthy requirements of this standard, and it's pretty stringent. But when it comes to the risk of fire, isn't that what we want? This test accounts for the type of things that we do all the time. Dropping the battery, leaving it on the charger overnight, getting it wet, using it under extreme conditions of weather and use. I think our batteries should be safe from these seemingly common scenarios. Sure, this will add cost, but how much value do you put on your safety and those around you? The reality is it's likely to happen with or without us talking about it. But I feel like we as a community should take a more proactive approach so we don't experience the same fate as the hoverboard industry. As someone has devoted more than 10 years to this industry, I certainly hope this isn't the case. What's your thoughts on this?